Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint this cityscape a la prima, meaning we're gonna work section by section and just put in the value we see. This is very useful for plein air or when you're under time constraint and you wanna figure out how to paint the scene quickly and efficiently. So with that being said, let's get started. So as I went ahead and drew this uh, off camera, I'm gonna talk a bit about what I did here because it's really important. And also I will link down below a high resolution photo of this where you can recreate it yourself, maybe using the grid method or even tracing, but I will include a photo in the description box so you can actually redraw this very easily, okay? So when you're doing a, kind of an a la prima painting, uh, whether you're out Outside, or you have a time constraint, you want to go at it more, a more direct approach, your drawing has to support that. You have to create a drawing that supports it. And what this means is that we put a lot of emphasis on shapes. You want to make sure that your shapes are clear and avoid clutter. So look at this, these shadows in the cars here, look how connected they are. All of this is essentially one shape. Had I started adding details in and putting all sorts of things that really aren't necessary, I would get lost. I need to know that this is one big shape. I need to know that this entire tree is one big shape. I need to know that um, this entire wall perhaps with some gaps for foliage is another shape and perhaps this foliage connects with this, okay? So when you paint a la prima, you want to get things in a more direct approach. You can add more details later, but the main shapes and blocking them in are is really important. And you only have a few. You have like one, two, three, four, five, six, and all of these small ones between the cars, okay? So in any case, now let's get to painting this. Now, because this is a really fun way of circumventing a lot of the challenges in watercolor. And what do I mean by that? That you don't need to worry as much about flow because we're gonna paint this whole thing uh, together and the order doesn't matter as much. It doesn't matter if I first uh, paint the, you know, if I cover some parts up, if I cover uh, a specific part. What's really cool about this approach is that you can start wherever you want. You can start with the darks, you can start with the lights. Uh, I'm gonna disregard colors and just focus on temperature. So what I have here is a couple of shadows that are fairly close to us. So what I'm gonna do is use a bit of a warm color. But what is important here is that look at how dark these shadows are. I need to allow myself or give myself permission to go as dark as necessary, okay, with this, um, especially with this area that's so close to us. So I'm gonna use something along the lines of this. Uh, let me get some test paper here, just see what it looks like. You see, I need it to be darker. I need to uh, be courageous. And even though this is the first thing I'm gonna paint, I have to um, make it work, okay, and, and be dark enough. Now, here's the thing. Now, we don't have to focus on technique and how things work together and, and not even edges as much. So this enables us more time to make sure we actually get the shapes right. So take your time. Take your time with the mixing. I know it can be sometimes boring, but I want you to really allow yourself uh, to take your time with these things because we want to get them right in one go. So let's get started with this shape here. And you see it's just one big shape. And the cool thing about this method is once again, you can work at things in one go um, and, and get a painting done relatively quickly, okay? Now I missed with my drawing one of the mirrors here, so I'm gonna just be careful to leave that as a highlight, you see, like that. Later on I can uh, mute it down a bit if necessary. And even getting the shapes to be super accurate isn't as important when you're working this way as long as the, the large impression is um, unharmed, okay? So let me add a bit of redness to this just to warm it up a little bit as it gets closer to us. And you really wanna make sure you take your time mixing when you're working this way. Now I can go a little looser. See, I don't have to worry that much. I can let go on the brush, touch it, hold it from a little more far uh, and just get the gist of the shapes in correctly. In correctly, not incorrectly, um, and then go like that. The shadows can be pretty homogenous. You don't have to have them, uh, you don't need too much variation in color and, and all of that because the color is gonna come from the lighter shapes, okay? That's how it's gonna work with this one. Now I do want to make sure that I get things as quickly as necessary so that I don't lose the uh, wetness of the wash. Now notice how we have this beautiful dark line that follows. 
the shape of this uh, shadow. So let's get that in. I don't even care if it's a bit of a dry brush or a little, uh, you know, there's this line here. And you see how we can just start getting in all sorts of interesting details. Now, one thing I do want to get is some wet and wet for the tires. Okay. Should have mentioned this before because you need to get ready for these things. But here we go. Super duper thick paint to make sure that it actually works against the already um, wet paper. And you see just wherever I see that things get a little darker, I'll even use a bit of black here. I know I usually don't, um, don't use it, but I want to show you there's a multitude of ways of doing things, okay? So don't uh, try not to get stuck in your old ways, so to speak. Um, so you see I'm just fleshing out some of the shape within the shape. Uh, and this is a great opportunity to do that while the paper is still wet. I'm going to darken this bottom section up a bit. And this shape is done essentially. That's all we need here. Now it looks strange. It doesn't look like necessarily it's working. The reason is you don't have context for anything here. We still don't have any idea what the what's going on here. You see we just see this one shape and it's out of context. Let's move on to another one. I think let's do the trees in the background. And why do I want to go for those? Um, and I'm gonna swipe, I have two versions of the picture, I have one in color and one in black and white, and I'm gonna include that too below, just so you can work from both. Um, it's really important uh, to, to start working with shapes that you can tell their value, you can tell their shape a little more easily, and perhaps they're larger. Uh, it doesn't matter, again, you can, start, you can start with the highlights even here in this particular thing, but um, if you already want to work in an order that makes sense, I would do that, okay? So first, I'm gonna focus on very clear large shapes. Uh, this tree is really dark. It's probably the, the darkest value you get here. So look at how, mm, how much I don't overwork this shape. I'm just going at it in one go. It's a pretty wet wash, by the way. You can't see this because the light doesn't shine uh, at the right angle for you to see the sheen, but it's a very, uh, very wet wash. And this will enable me to just get it done in one go. Okay, now I'm skipping this um, post here, this um, street light post, uh, leaving some gaps, obviously, for the sky, but not too much. Like below this, there isn't going to be any gap. And working my way around the buildings and the balconies and everything. Now, everything is going to uh, dry, obviously, much lighter than you see it now. So you just want to account for that, okay? Um, so let's go like that. And you see it's a very large and clear shape. I'm gonna paint around this other light post. Um, street lamp. I don't have to. Honestly, you could merge more. But let's, let's try and keep some of it uh, for now. Uh, now, this connects fully to the foliage on the left, in my opinion. So I'm just gonna connect the two, you see? And, and notice again, I know a lot of people struggle with overworking trees. The reason why, and I'm gonna have a specific video on this, I believe the next one actually. Uh, the reason why many people struggle with this is they try and get every leaf in. Look at what I'm doing here. I'm not even trying to get any leaves in. I'm just worrying about the overall um, shape the edges mostly and the rest will uh, complete itself uh, and the, the viewer will understand, okay? If you want to go more realistic, you obviously have my permission, you don't need it. Uh, but I'm just saying that's how I do it, okay? So all I worry about, and let me strengthen it a bit, all I worry about is the uh, edges and getting the, the shape to be to flow nicely. And look at the reference photo, the trees honestly here are just a bunch of shadows. Um, <clears throat> so you don't have to, it's just a couple of big shapes. So don't get too caught up in getting each and every detail of them. They will make sense if the value is accurate, okay? Now I'm, I'm, I'm going ahead and connecting this tree to some of the shapes I see here of <clears throat> different foliage and, and the, even the windows of the building in the background because they're pretty dark. So I'm connecting them already. And then we have this foliage on the right that I'm going to get in because I'm already there. Uh, and it's a similar color slash value. So let's let's go ahead and get these. Now again, in the middle, I want this to be an even shape, okay? So I'm going at it fairly slowly and making sure that, uh, that it's wet enough to get an even wash. But then around the edges, 
that's where I'm going to start placing in different shapes that make it clear that this is foliage. And I can grab another smaller brush, no need to insist on a, on a um, huge brush for the small details. I do want to be able to get some of the finer lines here like that. Just to make sure it's, a, just to make it clearer that it's a bunch of trees uh, and, and foliage and all sorts of things like that, okay? And look at how very easily we already blocked in two pretty large shapes, I would say, uh, that work, I think, really well. Now, uh, what you want to start paying attention to is, the way I see it, these are all very similar value. However, the windshields are slightly darker. Now, the windshield also reflects the sky a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a very light blue here just to uh, separate the, the, the windshield from the top, uh, the top car parts of the car, the roof and the top of the you know engine, the front, whatever you want to call it. So here we go. And actually, my paper is not at an angle. Uh, I'm fine with that for now. Let's see. If I see it causes trouble later, I can just uh, give it an angle. It's not a problem. Maybe let's even dab in some paint yet into this. Um, this windshield is probably almost as light, but let's let's put in just a bit of value, just to create that separation. You don't need much. Same goes for this one. You see. They're so light, but just a little can go a really long way in making that uh, distinction. They do have uh, a very thin line kind of here, especially making the distinction between the roof and the, this part. But well, regardless, it works. Now I'm going to get a bit of darker paint just for this once again. There we go. And we created a separation. Again, you see this out of context. It's still unclear. Don't worry about that. Uh, let's start putting in the shapes of the buildings, actually. So what I'm going to do is um, use a bit of a neutral mix here. So I'm going to grab from all three of my currently used primaries, perhaps a little warmer. Um, let's see what we get here. And I'm just going to get that building in. It's fairly light, so you don't need much. Um, against the sky. Look at it against the sky. It's fairly light. The sky is white. I'm going to leave that completely white, actually. And we're just going to cover the whole thing up. It may look a little dark initially, but then you see when you spread out the color, uh, the paint, rather, you, you can tell that it's much lighter than you suspected. And the later on, we're going to add the shadows within these shapes, okay? Now, all of the buildings here, to me, are just one shape. To me, that's the same shape, you see? So I'm going to connect them all, just like we did earlier. We're connecting as much as we can. And we're going to get some white gaps. I'm fine with that. Uh, when you paint a La Prima like this, you pay a price with the technique. It's less graceful. Uh, but I'm okay with that. And if you're doing uh, plein air and you're outside and you don't have as much time or you need to get the details in faster, that's actually a good trade-off. Okay? So you lose some of the gracefulness of the technique. But what you lose in that, you gain in spontaneity and it just, it just looks good in so many ways. Now we have the wall here on the left, oopsie. Uh, I'm going to warm it up just a bit, but still keep things fairly uh, muted. So let's go like that, mute it up, a bit of yellow there. And this one's a little darker if you look at it carefully compared to this one, but it's still not a big enough of a, of a difference to to really matter. So you can try and get it to be a little closer to the one on the right, or you can just go at it, you see, like that. It's a very direct approach, what we're doing here. It's very direct. And when I have a big shape like this with smaller, darker shadows within it, I will try to first get that large shape in. Okay, now maybe I may need to go over some elements and darken them, like the trees. Um, that's fine. We're, we're gonna do this step by step. Now, this side of the curve is darker. So let's darken that up as well. But if you notice, it starts a little lighter. So I'm going to start a little lighter and maybe cool. Let's see what we can do here. So this part goes a little lighter, see? And as it gets closer to us, and this is a fairly muted painting for me, you know, I usually go way more saturated. Um, but once in a while, you know, it's nice to change things up a bit. 
I personally like the more saturated look, but I'm trying to maybe improve my balance a bit, so we'll see. The right side I'm I'm considering not touching, but let's let's cover it up like this. And then as we get closer, let's darken it and even warm it up. Okay, let's get some of that saturation going. So you see like this. First, I'm just adding a bit of saturation. The value is pretty much similar. But around here, let's start darkening as well. Like that. Get it in one go if you can, some lines if it's possible, like so. Now we have an opportunity to really observe this and see, does it need to go darker? Probably does. So I'm gonna get a bit more of that darker red. It's more quinacridone rosy. And again, the colors I get asked about so often, they don't matter, which is why I don't detail them here. Uh, you can see in the description below, I talk about the most common ones I use and the most useful ones I think, but um, specific colors aren't as important really to me, especially not in these types of uh, paintings. Now you see I'm make, trying to make use of wet and wet as much as I can. Now for the right side, let's keep it fairly uh, light. So we're just gonna go like this. And I'm gonna let them connect and I'm fine with that. We're gonna get a lot of bleeding here. That's, I'm, I'm all in on that, I don't mind that. In fact, let's go ahead and connect the right section. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. You see how slowly this starts to have a, a shape? This, this painting starts to take a shape uh, that actually makes sense. That's how it works. It's built slowly. Um, when we refine it a little more, we add a little darks to where necessary, we add a little lights, it will start making even more sense, okay? You have to trust the process here. So that's another one of these blue, white blue uh, marks that say you can park here, obviously. Um, like that. And last one probably around here. You see, now you start to see the context for it all, okay? Um, what we're gonna do now, I actually want to add these small shapes in here, like that. We have this, the tiny cars here. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna let it dry for a bit. I do wanna take some distance away from it and, and come back with a fresh mind in a few minutes. So this is dry and I'm quite happy with the result. Now, if I look at the reference personally, I do see some darker sections here. I'm not gonna darken this whole thing up because then we'll lose some of the transparency here. Notice this beautiful, you can actually see the, you know, the paper shining through. I don't wanna lose that. Um, I do want to darken some of these trees here. I feel like they'll create a better frame. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do first. And this is very simple. I'm just gonna go over what I already have there. And I don't mind if they get completely black. Uh, to be honest, it's okay. They are dark enough to... Uh, I'm gonna do... It's very interesting. It's like a reversal. You know, usually you see more details in the front and fewer details in the background. Sometimes the background is lighter and the front is darker. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flatten these trees a little more and I'm gonna darken them a little more. Uh, so it's a bit counterintuitive. It's like, even though they're farther, they're gonna be darker because this also means we're gonna see fewer details in them. So it kind of works out nicely, you see? Um, and I do need them to get a little darker just to contrast better with these uh, street lights and uh, some other elements that uh, I feel like will contrast better with them like this building as well. But here's the thing you can already do uh, while you're at it, you see this balcony has this darker section underneath it. So I'm gonna just add a bit of water and merge the two already together. So I'm gonna go like this and it, it almost meets it here down below. So I'm gonna connect the two areas. And then we simplify things a bit for the viewer. Um, I like doing these kinds of things whenever possible. So you see, I got that lower section of the balcony in. Uh, I could even use this opportunity to get some of its details. Let me switch to a smaller brush just so we can do things a little more gracefully. And let's connect it to the details I was planning on getting later, but uh, we already have a good opportunity, so why not? Let's get that um, window and all sorts of details that um, will just look good and it's a good opportunity to get them in right now. Um, maybe even some of the details on the walls. I'm gonna simplify, so let's go like this, you see? Just for the um, air conditioning units and all sorts of 
smaller shadows on the wall and obviously I can just add like a window or two here. Uh, hopefully that will make sense. Uh, sometimes you really can't you just have to go for it and hope it looks good. But I think it makes sense, this uh, left section. These, the foliage here could also get a little darker, but that's as, as far as I'm gonna go. So let's go like this. And, and you see, even while I'm correcting, I'm also using the opportunity to merge a bit with some other shapes. In fact, I'm gonna do the same thing right now. So I mixed a neutral value here. I'm going to use this opportunity to connect this foliage with some of the details here on the street. So we have a lot of these lines um, indicating the edges of different fences and, and whatnot. So I just want to get some of those in and maybe a kind of dry brush mark to get the separation between the sidewalk and this wall. Okay, so uh, and let's dev out some of that. It's too much. And you see you just get a nice little uh, indication. I actually plan on adding some lines there, but we're gonna keep that for last, okay? Um, let's just put one to give us kind of a reference for later, but uh, I'm gonna add these details of the sidewalk later. Uh, now let's put in this thing. Um, as I've been using quite a lot of muted colors, let's try and push this more towards a bit of a cleaner blue, okay? It, it has kind of a gray bluish uh, color, so let's try and get that in. Now here's what I'm gonna do. It's a relatively simple shape, so I'm just getting it in one go first. Okay, like so. And I just press all the way uh, on the brush and see what I can get. So I need a bit more water here just to get this to flow. See, and once I have that shape in, I can start revisiting some areas of it and darkening it, okay? There, there are endless ways of doing this. Uh, sometimes you just have to kind of get a feel for it. Uh, I feel like it is darker around the base, so let's get it darker and get rid of some of this white gap. The white gap it really depends on the situation. Sometimes it's detrimental and sometimes it's okay. Like in these Al Prima paintings, I'm actually fine with that uh, white gap because the whole vibe is just looser and you know more free and, and direct. Uh, we have the other a little farther, let's get that in. Even though the trees are a little wet, because they're very dark to begin with, we shouldn't have a problem. Now look at this gap here, that's a beautiful opportunity to add some uh, contrast and some interest. So I'm gonna do that, and sorry if the ambulance has come through very loudly to the camera, we'll see about that. You see I'm just adding in those details and further uh, building up this shape here and it's very small so you can't see too much of it, but that's fine There's there's not a lot of details there honestly uh, And the tree here, let's make it a little lower and Have it more neutral and touch the rooftops of the cars here. Okay, hopefully you can see some of that We'll just bring out the highlights in them a little stronger now There are a couple of darks on the cars that we can get right now, why not? So I'm just, I'm still using a smaller brush because uh, these shapes that I'm now painting are a little smaller. I wanna make sure I have just enough control to get them in accurately. Uh, so we have a very dark part here that's in fact a continuation of this shape, but I didn't get it earlier because it was a bit outside of it. We have the bike here. I'm just gonna put them in very, very loosely like that. And here we have the right side. So this is what I really wanted to get. Uh, we'll see, maybe we'll have to darken some of these, maybe not. So here we go, side of this car. And notice how slowly but surely it starts making more sense. Okay, and this is a very impressionistic, loose approach to begin with. So obviously it's not gonna look necessarily hyper-realistic. Hopefully from afar it does. To be honest with you, it is a look I'm going for generally speaking. But even if it doesn't, that's fine. Now, I'm gonna, I wanna test this out. What I need is a bit of a lighter wash here to get some of the details in here. So we have this very prominent kind of uh, shadow like that. And once you start putting in those shadows, it just makes it clear that it's a building we're looking at. You see, I don't always get my straight lines straight. That's fine, don't worry about that. Uh, and now we can start getting in some of the windows. Now the windows in this particular angle and situation are darker, okay? Sometimes they'll be lighter reflecting the sky, sometimes they'll be darker. Here they're darker. I don't wanna go overboard, so I'm using a bit of a dry brush to get some broken texture on them. 
So on the one hand, they're very dark, but the thing that kind of um, balances it out and makes them not too prominent is that dry brush. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, we got a one less window here, and, and it's fun for you to see me experiment with doing things a little differently here, um, because you get to see that really I'm still learning a lot. And I feel like, um, especially recently, um, I've been learning so much. Usually when, when you learn new things, things stop connecting. Once you stop being happy with your work, it often means you you have this breakthrough you need to go through and you're learning a lot. So I always say like, uh, a lot of people send me work for critique and they're sometimes they, they're bummed out to send me bad work and I'm like, I wanna see bad work. Bad work means you're actually making progress. So if you're unhappy with something, it means you're stretching out your comfort zone. If you just keep doing the same thing and you're happy with it, but it's just the same thing and you do wanna stretch your comfort zone, I think it's important to, um, to try and shake things up. If you're happy with what you're doing and um, and that's what you want to do, go ahead, don't do anything outside of that. I'm, that's, this, that's really important to make that distinction. Uh, I'm all for doing the thing that makes you happy. If you enjoy doing, and I forgot this side of the tree, so I'm gonna get it in now. But if you enjoy doing, painting the same subjects, not necessarily uh, moving outside of a specific realm, go for it. <clears throat> I mean it, like if, if that's what makes you happy. If you want to um, perhaps stretch your limits and try new things, I do recommend, you know. Uh, uh, getting to a point where you actually are unhappy with some of your work. It means you're growing, trust me. I know that I've been through these cycles for probably like tens of times now, where I don't like something for a while and then I go back to liking what I do and then I dislike it again. And it's always like that. When you dislike your results, there's there's a lesson to be learned and, uh, and growth is around the corner, so to speak. Okay, uh, so hopefully this makes sense. Let's see here. Um, there aren't too many details on the buildings in the background. I will add, you don't really see them in the reference photo just a bit. I will add these types of lines. Sometimes it helps to show that the edge of the roof is beveled outwards. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And a bit of a line like this. And these lines aren't necessarily there, but they just make me like the shape I painted a little more. Let's make the tree a little stronger here. Uh, the foliage I'm gonna leave as is. You don't need to darken that in this instance, but I do need to darken some of the windshields of the cars. So let's go with this one first. I hope I don't regret it. Uh, but it's just not as light in the photo. So here we go, one, uh, here we go, two, three, kind of like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, we're done. There is barely anything to do, just two things. Get some dark, whoops, I went way too fast with it. Get some dark details on the cars and some on the sidewalk, okay? Let's start with the sidewalk, actually. So I'm just picking up everything I have here, you see? Just a bunch of colors. This is a great opportunity to use your leftovers because what we need here is just some dark colors. Now I'm gonna get started with the foreground. Uh, what often happens, you start with the background and it's dark and then it gets lighter. I want it to go the other way around. So I'm just gonna start putting in those lines. I'm gonna get rid of some of the paint here on my brush, you see? And remember, because of perspective, the farther the lines go, the closer they are together because you need to, things to get smaller. Okay, so let me show you. I'm just gradually making the distances between them a little uh, smaller and smaller as I go, okay? It's barely noticeable, but uh, it is important. Now I'm also breaking off some of the lines. You don't want to spell everything out for the viewer in this style, in this, it's what I love. I love to leave something for the imagination, you see? But it gets the job done. I will get one line here like that between the light and dark sections of the sidewalk. Now here, we do have lines that go this way. So let's get those. Normally I would rotate the paper, but I don't wanna hurt your orientation in the painting, so I'm leaving it as is. So I'm gonna rotate my hand actually and go like that and just get a couple of these in. You see? Just a few of these in to help us, help pull us into the painting. Like so. There we go. And you see now you feel like you're being pulled. It even looks a bit like a, a rainy day, which is fine by me because it was a gloomy day, not too much sun there. Um, so that's it for the sidewalk. You don't want to overdo it. I think now we're at the limit of how much we can do. We can actually dab a bit just to make it a little lighter. Now for the cars. I'm going to use pure blue. 
because I don't know it looks good to me looks like it's something that will look good so I'm gonna place in and it's barely gonna be noticeable uh, which is good that's what I'm aiming for just here and there a couple of kind of supportive lines to help us imagine that we're seeing something within the shadows that's the whole thing it's creating an impression like there's something there you see um, we can get some of the uh, details of the car. I'm gonna just add a bit of water to get the paint to move so we can pretend like we get some details of the car. Uh, maybe there's, you know, one of these details that goes around. Maybe a door handle. Make sure you don't overdo this step as well. And one last thing is uh, I want to add a very light blue here right to the bottom of the mirror just to show that this is a blue car. Okay, uh, now is there anything else I want to add? Perhaps the headlights uh, are gonna go like this. There's a bit of a light section within them, which is gonna make the dark section pop. Um, hmm, let's see if there's anything else I want. Uh, I think this is good. I think we're good to go. If you do want to just add a bit of uh, interest to it, what we can do, let's, let's go a little crazy here. It's not, I mean, it's not what I would normally do in these kinds of paintings, but Let's just add a couple of, um, we have a lot of muted greens here. So let's add a bit of pure uh, reds. It's gonna create a nice harmony. This is just for, I guess for our own fun. Uh, I don't know, even know if it plays any important purpose to be honest with you, uh, but let's, let's give it a try. So I'm gonna put in a sign somewhere in the back here. Let's see, let's contrast it with something fairly dark like this black. So I'm just, you see, I'm putting in this red sign. It's gonna give us a secondary focal point in addition to the cars at the front, you see, like that. It's a very Alvaro Castanet thing to do. Uh, I feel like it'll just give it some, um, I guess, interest. Okay, really, it's really optional. So now you see there's this red pulls you in. Um, now I do wanna add it in some other place. So let's let's do this. Let's pretend that this car is red. And I'm gonna create just a bit of red on the sides here. It doesn't even, again, it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to actually be something that's there. What I'm looking for is just a, a compositional means. You see, all I'm doing is using it as a compositional means to convey my message, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean that it's literally there, this thing I'm painting. And that's a very important thing I think um, you need to come to terms with. Not everything you're gonna draw, it means or paint, it means that it's actually there. We're taking a lot of artistic freedoms here. So you see we get this. Now this is a little too strong, so all I'm gonna do is dab some of it out. And you can imagine this is reflected light and this car is red. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's just, you know, you can do this a multitude of ways. And it was just a spontaneous idea I got uh, on the fly. So if you have these spontaneous ideas, go for it, try them out, that's how you learn. And to be honest with you, if I look at this, it's way too muted to my taste. It's not necessarily how I like my paintings, but that means I'm growing because there's something I need to learn on how to create these kinds of things, okay? Now let's do it truly like Alvaro Castanet. I'm gonna add here the bottom part of this sign like that and then I'm going to use my white paint here to um, just add a white stripe on top of it okay normally I would take more time finishing the painting but this one is so loose to begin with that it's just going to be the purpose so I'm not going to do too much just this there we go see we just get this feeling like there's a sign at the edge of the street uh, and this is it, so I think we can wrap it up. What I'm gonna do is uh, sign this, remove the tape, and then show it to you up close. So I'm done here, I hope you like this result. Uh, again, I'm trying out new things and I enjoy sharing them with you. Uh, there's a long way to go still, it's funny how no matter how much you learn in watercolor painting, you always have so much more to learn. But in any case, I wanted to show you some of the details up close. And again, because all of this is muted and my personal taste is to like some saturated colors, I added in these reds. They don't have to make sense really as long as they give the viewers something 
to look at. So if anything, I want you to use this as a push or motivation to try out new things, challenge yourself if you want to grow, if you want to improve. Uh, I think that's one of the best things you can do for yourself. Now let's wrap it up face to face. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And as you know, uh, if you've been following me for a while, I enjoy not only sharing, you know, the successes, but also the partial successes and flat out failures you get to learn with me as I practice. I have to share this honestly. I can't just pretend to always get it right because I don't, okay? Uh, so if you enjoyed this one in my videos, I would really appreciate if you drop a like and maybe comment down below. It really helps me reach new people. And if you still aren't, if you subscribe, it will be much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching the videos and I will see you again in the next one.